So the other day, I saw a few things regarding a one Trey Turner out in Los Angeles with the Chargers. And there was a few things that kind of said, like, you know, just why they should cut him. And then I was like, that seems odd to even pop up. So then I started looking at it, and it's like, well, just to see if it did happen, if the Vikings should look at this. And I I feel like um, resounding yes. So in 2020... It wasn't his best year. He only played in nine games, started all nine of those games. Bit of a groin issue for most of the year, it looked like, from all the injury reports that I could find, except for week one. It had him with a knee, and then that never popped up again, and it said groin throughout the rest. So, bit of an injury-plagued year. He had a pro football focus grade of 34.8, allowed two sacks and had two penalties. Obviously, not good. But prior to that, from uh, 2014 all the way to 2018, um, his lowest grade was a 63.9 with his previous low after that being a 67.0, getting as high as 79.2. And he's never allowed more than six sacks in a year, which was 2019, his 63.9. Aside from that, Never three. He has a little bit of a penalty problem. He's gotten all the way up to 11, but I'm willing to live with that since it doesn't look like he gives up a ton of sacks, which is good. And he also, prior to 2020, has played in at least 13 games every single year of his career. Now, why would they get rid of him after a year of, you know, They traded for him. They traded Russell Okun to get Trey Turner from the Panthers. And contractually, he has an $11.2 million cap hit. They can save all $11.2 million if they are to cut Trey Turner. And from that 2014 to 2018 range, Pro Football Focus actually graded him in the top half of right guards every year in the league. Now, Pro Football Focus went on to say basically he's like top seven, top half of the league and probably doesn't deserve all five of those Pro Bowls where they're kind of like maybe just the 2015 year where he had a 79.2 grade. So a little overrated with the Pro Bowls, sure, but it's a lot better than what Minnesota's been working with. And he's a scheme versatile right guard who is turning 28 in this next season. So even though he had some injuries, he's in his prime, something that shouldn't keep him from recovering. So if he's cut, I think this is well worth a risk. And he is certainly athletic enough to play within the scheme. And I have some comparisons here from pro days and combines and all that stuff to, well, the right guards from last year, basically, Drew Samia and Ezra Cleveland. So... Turner, six foot two, three hundred ten pounds. He ran a four eight four forty, had a ten yard split of one point seven two. His arm length was thirty four inches and had twenty five bench reps. Samia, six foot four, so two inches taller. He's five pounds lighter at three oh five. A forty of five point two nine, a one point eight three ten yard split, and thirty three inches in the arm length with twenty eight reps. Ezra Cleveland, six foot six, three hundred eleven pounds, four nine three forty, one point seven four ten yard split, thirty three and three eighths inch arm length, and thirty bench reps. So he blows Samia out of the water and is actually comparable to Ezra Cleveland as a guard, where Cleveland is a left tackle by trade, where Cleveland was one of the more athletic tackles coming out in last year's draft. So, certainly athletic enough. He's stockier, has a better anchor, better pass protector. Obviously, he has five Pro Bowls, but once again, like from the pro football focus people, if you go by them, you kind of have to with offensive linemen. No one else really carries offensive line stuff. But 
they think it should only be the one Pro Bowl. Anyway, vast improvement, <laughs> and it should be a heavily monitored situation up in Viking land. So, I don't know how true it is, how really, how much they're thinking of it, because I know the Chargers did have one of the more complicated offensive lines last year. I don't know if they used the most combinations, but it was certainly up there. So they could very well just want to keep him because they could come to the same realization. Like, well, the one super bad year came in a year where there was COVID, no training camp, he was hurt, and he was also traded. So you could say the one super outlier had a lot of moving parts to it. But if they actually do cut him, Minnesota should try to get in on this. I don't know how much it would take, but this would be a massive upgrade. And at that point, since he's played right guard his whole career, you then have to probably talk about moving Ezra either to left guard or left tackle, where he probably should have been just to begin with on the left side. But that's whatever. If we get him in the building, we can talk about all that stuff later. But... As it stands right now, I just would like to get a decent guard in the building. And I think this is certainly one that could be that. And even if it's just on a one-year deal, he's probably our best guard. Like, day one. So, assuming he's healthy from his groin injury. Assuming that, he's probably going to be the best guard that Minnesota would have. So, I would like to know your guys' opinions on this down below. Um, would you want him? Do you not want him? Is this something that you should stay away from? I think, obviously, no. Go get it. But, yeah. Your opinions and thoughts down below. Uh, like and subscribing. Super helpful, guys. And until next time, I bid y'all adieu.